Hey guys, Luke here. For today's video, I'm going to be talking about the 2020 Wooden Spoon Race in the NRL. Now, it's between the Bulldogs and it's between the Broncos. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I had pretty much sort of given in to the fact that the Bulldogs are going to be the Wooden Spooners. If you haven't seen my videos before, I'm a Bulldogs fan. And yeah, I think every Bulldogs supporter had kind of lost hope. Um, there were winnable games, Manly, uh, even Titans, a few games like that, where we thought if, that was, if there was going to be a game they could win, is going to be those ones. However, they lost those ones, but they did get a win against the Rabbitohs last week, which look, it ruined my multi, to be honest. I'll be honest, I threw them in my multi. I had no faith in the Bulldogs last week, and yet they came and played probably one of the best games um, they've played all year. And, uh, I mean, obviously, if they got a win, considering they've only got, like, two wins, three wins, something like that. Um, but what's more amazing to me is the fact that the Broncos are on the bottom of the ladder. You look at the roster of that Broncos side, and they shouldn't be on the bottom of the ladder, but for some reason they just are. Now, I know they've had a lot of key injuries. Um, you look at guys like Payne Haas and Dave Hafida and stuff, they have been out quite a bit. However, in comparison to a team like the Bulldogs, the Bulldogs don't even have those superstars to even miss. Um, so... The Broncos might be missing stars, but the fact is they had stars. The Bulldogs didn't, and yet the Bulldogs find themselves above the Broncos. And I think a lot of it comes down to effort. Um, we've seen all season, I won't say, sorry, I won't say every game all season, but we'll say for 90% of the games the Bulldogs have played, we are able to walk out of that game, or walk away from that game saying, yeah, the Bulldogs tried hard, and you know they're a couple of points off. A lot of the games, even those ones that I just mentioned, the Manly and um, a few of those other ones, the Bulldogs have started strong, they've taken a lead, they've taken a good lead, but it's kind of like they have that loser's mentality where they let the other team back into it and eventually fall off and the other team runs away with it. Um, even down to that Dragons game, uh, they beat the Dragons earlier in the year and I thought they were going to do the double over the Dragons, I thought that would have been hilarious, especially considering the Dragons were, well when the Bulldogs beat the Dragons earlier in the year, that was when the whole talk was, uh, it's going to be Dean Pay against McGregor and we'll see who gets the sack. Now, I don't think any of them got the sack at the point, uh, at that point anyways, despite the Bulldogs winning. However, both of them have uh, since been sacked. Now, for the Dragons, I think it hasn't really changed anything for them, apart from a bit of a mentality change uh, at times during the season. Although when McGregor was sacked, I think the Dragons were actually starting to play decent football, where they've completely fallen off towards the back end of the season. But they did enough to avoid the wooden spoon. The Bulldogs, on the other hand, looked like they were just a shoe-in. Now, I knew the Broncos were there and about, but they were, it was always like, well, the Broncos are going to pick it up eventually. However, we're in the last round of the comp. There's, there's no pick it up for the Broncos. I don't know what they're going to do. Uh, they've got the Cowboys this week, which is a bit of a rivalry game. And, you know, I think it's Darius Boyd's last game. So maybe it's going to be like a big performance for them. Maybe they're going to come home strong. But the Bulldogs, they've got the um, Panthers to the top of the table. Now, Panthers could rest a few plays. And I'd love to say this is a winnable game for the Bulldogs, but I just can't see it. Now... I know just beat the Rabbitohs last week, and it, it might seem silly of me to be like, oh, no, it's, it's, it's a no chance. No chance for the Bulldogs, considering they just beat the Rabbitohs, who are a top eight side. But Panthers are just next level this year. And um, even if they rest players, like, this is this is Panthers. This is Panthers where every year their reserve grade wins um, wins the comp. Their under-20s wins the comp. If there's injuries, they've got a person who's probably at least half decent that can step in. I mean, if they rest Nathan Cleary, they've got Matt Burton to come in. If they rest their fullback... Um, Edwards, they've got that, that other lad who played at Aikens or whatever his name is. He played at the start of the year. Um, they've got plenty, they've got 1,000 backs, 1,000 forwards. Um, they've even loaned out players, so they could play some of them. I think that Panthers are the most suited to rest um, teams and get away with it. Uh, sorry, rest players and get away with it, let alone against the Bulldogs. And the Bulldogs also, they're going to have some injuries. Um, I think uh, Lewis, he's got his concussion, don't know if he'll play. Uh, Avarillo um, ended up injured as well last week, I think. Don't know if he'll play. But yeah, just in comparison on who's going to get the wooden spoon, I'd love to say the Broncos are, are shoe in to get it now. However, I just I don't want to get any hopes up. Uh, <laughs> as a Bulldog supporter, I really, really want the Broncos to get it. I think the whole NRL wants the Broncos to get it, just because the Broncos have never got it. Let's be honest, Broncos fans have never really experienced seasons like this. Um, they've seen sort of every other team go through it, but they've never really experienced it themselves. They've always been like a top eight side, and if they did happen to miss it on the off chance, it was always like ninth or tenth, and like, oh no, we'll just buy some players next year and, and we'll be right. At, they're at the, t at the point where there's sort of no light at the end of the tunnel for them. They don't even have a coach for next year. It's sort of their first chance of experiencing it, and we'll see how 
things go from. We'll see how the fans go because, like I said, every other club has sort of been through this and the Broncos haven't. So it'd be an interesting time. Um, you'd be able to see why a lot of fans sort of drop off his support. Um, Broncos fans have always had a strong fan base, lots of uh, strong crowds and stuff, but um, it would have been interesting to see what the crowds would have been like uh, at sort of at this point in the season had there been uh, full crowds allowed because I feel like it would have been a drastic drop off especially in comparison to how well the Titans are going at the moment. The Titans are going well. I really thought the Titans would be a wooden spoon contender. Um, I think Holbrook's done a great job with them. And yeah, there's, a, there's a few teams that I thought would be in amongst the, the, the bottom four, or at least in the running for the wooden spoon, and they're not. Um, and then there's other teams that I thought would be in the top eight. Your teams like Manly and that, who just haven't, they just haven't done it this year. Um, so been a strange season, uh, obviously for the COVID stuff, but also just in terms of results as well, injuries, I suppose it all comes down to this COVID stuff, considering, uh, you know, in the last few weeks, and yet we're sort of, I don't know, it doesn't feel like we're that far into the season, um, especially considering, you know, there's been no origin, the origin's still to come, uh, you know, a shorter season in general. It just, it feels like there's still so much football left to be played. So the fact that it's like, oh, finals are coming up, it's like, whoa, wait, hang on, the finals are here? And that that's also goes into why it kind of keeps up on my mind that the Broncos can get the wooden spoon. So I kept, th- like I said, I keep thinking, oh yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll put it together eventually. I mean, how can they not put it together when they've got players like Milford, um, Payne Haas, uh, they've, got, they've got representative players too. I mean, Darius Boyd, He's a bit of a meme these days, but he was a great player. You've got your Corey Oates, Katoni Staggs. They've got a, a lot of good names, and they're just not putting it together on the park. Uh, or they're not on the park at all due to injuries and that sort of stuff. But I don't know. There's lots of problems at the Broncos, but there's definitely lots of problems at the Bulldogs. It's just a matter of effort. I feel like the Bulldogs players just putting that little bit more effort in. And I feel like the Broncos have got a lot of sort of skilled players. Like, if, if the Broncos got a lead and they got going, I feel like they, they could... They could absolutely beat the shit out of the Bulldogs. They could literally destroy them. They could put 50 on them. However, when the going gets tough, if the Bulldogs got into a bit of a grind with them, the Broncos are sort of the side there and try and finesse their way or score a lucky try. And if it doesn't work, well, then the Bulldogs can just frustrate them and then Bulldogs will run away with it themselves. Um, it's a bit of a, I don't know, a bit of a contrast in styles. Bulldogs are so conservative and then you have the Broncos who are quite flashy. It just doesn't come off a lot of the times. Um... But yeah, in terms of who deserves the wooden spoon, I've got to say the Broncos. I feel like the Broncos deserve it. At least with the Bulldogs, like I said, you, you, can, you can't really question their passion and effort. It's just a lot of the time the skill isn't there. Um, a guy like Lewis, Lockie Lewis, is a great example of it. You can look at it and you, you look at him and you go, God, that looks... Oh, that was a weird kick. But, you know, it comes off a lot, a lot of the time. And you're like, I don't know how he's passing. Looks like he can't even pass a ball. Yet sometimes it hits the mark, sometimes it doesn't. But he's always there. He's always making the tackles, always making those effort plays. And that's why a lot of Bulldog supporters love him. Also why a lot of Bulldog supporters don't love him. Um, kind of similar to Josh Reynolds. There's just a lot of passion there. Not necessarily the skill. Uh, whereas the Broncos, they've got a lot of those skilled players who don't look like they've got any passion. Look like they couldn't give two shits. Darius Boyd's a perfect example. Um, when he's on, he's on. Great player. Can still throw, he can still find a pass. He can do still a few things. But when it comes to defense, it's like... Oh, I can't be bothered, I'm too old for this shit. That's, that's what it looks like. He just throws his arm out, falls over, and he's done. Uh, whereas the Bulldogs, they don't do that. They might miss the tackle, but they're at least going to make an effort. Uh, and that's where, in terms of the wooden spoon, that's why I think a lot of people would love to see the Broncos get it. Like I said, I keep saying like I said, but um, in terms of the wooden spoon, the fans haven't, they've never experienced this, so a lot of other NRL fans are like, here, come on, feel our pain. We've all had it before. Now it's your turn, especially considering uh, how bad the Broncos are this year, it kind of feels deserved as well. Just look at the for and against. I think their for and against is in like the 300 and something. When I was going through and looking at the previous couple of Wooden Spoon, I think the Eels and Titans were the last two, and I think the Titans were in the 200s, Eels were in the 100s, and even the Bulldogs were in the 100s as well. So in terms of defense and blowout blowout games, the Broncos have been in a lot more blowout games. They've been getting 40, 50 put on them, a lot more than any other team, um, especially in recent years for Wooden Spoon. So... Yeah, I, I definitely would love to see the Broncos get the wooden spoon. Anyways, I'm just rambling on at this point. I keep repeating myself. I keep saying, like I said, um, so I'm just going to stop it here. Leave in the comment section below, who do you think is going to get the wooden spoon or who do you want to get the wooden spoon? Personally, like I said, Bulldog supporter, I want to see the Broncos get it. And I do think the Broncos are going to get it. Uh, the Cowboys, strong side, Tamalala's back. 
Uh, you know, you've got your Josh McGuire's and that. I think he's playing. I hope he is. Uh, Michael Morgan might not be there, but as long as Cam is there, I think they'll be okay. Uh, and I think they get the job done. Uh, they just have too much fire. At least Tom Lally himself can probably beat the Broncos at this point. At least I'm hoping. Fingers crossed. I hope this video doesn't come back to bite me on the arse here. Anyway, guys, uh, if you did happen to enjoy the video, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. Also, make sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram or just social media in general. It's on the screen right now. It's Mr. Luke on YT. Also, make sure to turn on the notification bell uh, when you subscribe as well. It lets you know when I've uploaded immediately. It's quite important these days, apparently, uh, on YouTube. So go ahead and do that. And that's where I'm going to wrap up the video. And that's where I'm going to wrap up the video, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon in the next one. Bye, guys.